name is Erica Hilton, and this is my family tree story. I was born on the Mediterranean coast of Turkey, one of the most beautiful places on earth in a town called Mersin. And I came to America when I was six years old, but I want to go back to the beginning, to my earliest memory of my grandmother and my great, great grandmother, whom I had never met, but I was actually named after my great grandmother. Um, her name was Hatun. H-A-T-U-N, and Hatun in Turkish means lady, like milady. In the Ottoman Empire, the Sultan would call his, his first wife, the true queen, Hatun, which meant milady. And so I was named after my grand, great grandmother. My mother told me that she had a dream the night before I was born. And she dreamt that her grandmother came to her in her dream um, as an angel. And she had told her that she needs to name me Hatun. So that's where I came from. And then my mother, uh, my grandmother, actually, uh, her name was Fatma. And um, she was a powerful woman. She had 12 children, six of whom uh, survived. So my mother was one of six children. She was the second to the oldest. She would, there were two sisters and four brothers. Um, I grew up with that family. My mother was married to my father and they divorced when I was born actually. And so my grandmother and my aunt and my uncles, they raised me until the age of six. My mother became an interpreter at the American Air Force Base in Turkey. It was um, Injerlik Air Force Base. And she was like a movie star. She was so beautiful. Um, she ended up meeting an American in the Air Force and she married and we came to America. And so at six years old, the first time I had flown on an airplane was Pan American Airways. And this is actually my first um, passport picture with my mother. I don't know if you can see that. Um, it, was, it was an interesting experience coming to America. Um, my mother was a brilliant woman. She could speak many languages and she looked like a cross between Hedy Lamar, Dorothy Lamour, and Elizabeth Taylor. She had hair down to her waist and she would walk down the street and she literally was one of the absolute most gorgeous human beings uh, to grace this earth. And so here we are in America. We came to Washington DC first and then to Clovis, New Mexico. Um, it was the American dream. And then that American dream unfortunately shattered a little bit. Um, my mother's husband was an alcoholic. He was very abusive to her. And I remember as a child, um, I was, I was, I saw a lot of this and I was saving my mother's life every time I turned around. Um, her husband would come home and he was drunk. And I remember jumping out the window and calling the police and bringing them in. And this went on for, for years. And I grew up being the protector of my family. My mother had two children um, by her husband, uh, my brother and my sister. And I raised them myself, basically, while my mother worked. And finally was able to convince my mother to walk away from the marriage. And um, I helped her um, through everything. After school, I was babysitting. Um, it was an interesting experience. But going back, I want to talk about my father's family, whom I had never met. I actually recall just before we came to America, my father was standing in the doorway and he was handing my mother a piece of paper. And that was the only thing I remember of my father, this tall man standing in a doorway. Fast forward 40 years later, I met my father for the first time. I flew to Turkey and I took my children, they were 16 and 17 years old. And um, we went together and we met my father. 
And um, I learned that I had a brother and two sisters from my father's um, marriages after he was married to my mother. And um, it was interesting because all of a sudden I could see myself in this person, his mannerisms, um, he loved to cook. And here I am 40 years old, he was trying to feed me with, with his own hands. He would cook and he was, he was so excited to meet me. Um, so it, it was an interesting experience. And so I, I didn't know anyone from my father's family. I didn't know my grandmother. I, I had never met my grandfather. I didn't meet my aunts and uncles. So it was, it was a very profound experience for me to meet this man who, who was um, the other half of the reason that I exist. And so I had asked him to tell me about my family. Where do I come from? Who are they? And a year later, he came to America and he brought me a gift. And it was my family tree. It was my ancestors going all the way back to Adam and Eve, actually. <laughs> because in, in Turkey and back in that part of the world, they believe that your family tree goes all the way back to the beginning, the origins. And let's see, there was Noah um, in my family tree, Adam and Eve. Um, but then there were poets and philosophers and artists. And one of them was Muhyiddin ibn Arabi. And he actually is one of the most renowned and famous poet philosophers um, in the Arab world. He was born in Spain and he traveled through North Africa all the way to Turkey and to Syria. And his mausoleum actually is in Damascus. And I was going to go there. I wanted to, um, to, to see his, his mausoleum, this very famous poet philosopher of the Arab world. Unfortunately, um, we can't go to Syria right now. But that was one of the things that touched me so deeply. Um, besides Muhyiddin ibn Arabi, there were other writers and poets and philosophers like Hatim el Tai, whom I had no idea who these people were. I didn't know very much about my culture. I didn't know very much about the Middle East because I was raised in America and I was an American. That's all I knew. Since I was six years old, I wanted to fit in. I wanted to be um, just like all the American little boys and girls. And I remember um, my mother put me in a Catholic school. It was the school next door. And when six months after they put me in school, the nuns called my mother and they said, you know, your daughter is not very bright. She doesn't speak. She just watches. She doesn't talk. She doesn't do anything. She just follows along. And so we may have to hold her back. And all of a sudden, I think a few months later, I began to speak English and I don't remember, I don't recall um, the, the, the time where I didn't speak. It was, it was like, like organic somehow, how children learn. And I remember so badly wanting to be fitting in. Um, my mother would, would um, send me to school with feta cheese and tomato sandwiches. And the other children had peanut butter and jelly. And I didn't know what peanut butter and jelly was. I remember seeing Wonder Bread and oh. smelling it. And to me, it smelled like chemicals because I was used to eating um, fresh baked bread from the oven, like French bread or Italian bread. There are so many tiny little things I remember from back um, during that time that was so different coming to America. And it was a time of, of learning. Um, once I began speaking, I, I absorbed everything. And I remember in fourth grade, I was, I was um, on my way to the bus and I got on the bus to go to school. And I remember these little boys um, were, were nasty little boys and they wouldn't let me sit down. And they called me Mexican. And I remember going, wait a minute, I'm not Mexican, I'm Turkish. I had no idea that they were insulting me. 
because to them that was an insult. And later on, I learned that our cultures are so similar, whether it's Mexico or whether it's Europe or any other culture, it was because I had dark hair and I had olive skin. And so um, it was, it's interesting seeing that, but I, I, I grew up and I became me. I went through this, this childhood, raising two children that my mother had, um, becoming her mother in a sense, because my mother was, was um, she was always working and she tried to raise her children as best as she could, but it was very, very difficult for her. And so I was the one, I was the rock of Gibraltar in the family. And I think that that was good for me because it taught me self-sufficiency. It taught me how to survive in the world and it taught me how to thrive in the world. And I think that's one of the things that a lot of people don't understand. We may go through so many things in our childhood. Okay, I wouldn't wish my childhood on anyone, but was it bad? No, it was something that was. Am I a victim? No. Am I a survivor? I don't wanna say that, I'm just a person. I, um, I believe that whatever is given to us, we take it and we flow with it. And of course, um, at the time when I was about 10 years old, I, I decided I was going to be an artist. I wanted to be a writer. I wanted to be an artist. And now I realize why I wanted to be an artist. I wanted to design my life the way I choose to. One of my favorite quotes is from a book that I read many, many years ago. Um, and the quote was, we all choose what we wish to be. No one impels or compels us. The same wind which blows a ship on the rocks can just as easily blow it into safe harbor. In short, it is not the wind, it is the set of the sail. And for me, that that quote is what I live by. Whatever happens in your past, whatever happens in your future, doesn't really matter. What's most important is what you're doing in the present. For me, I'm doing what I love. I love art. I love creativity. I love writing. I love poetry. And incidentally, I'm a poet. Did I know that my ancestors were famous poets? I didn't. I became a poet before I knew about Hatim El Tai. I became a poet before I knew about Muhyiddin Ibn Arabi. Um, I became a poet because I wanted to tell a story and I wanted to tell that story the way I know how, with love, with, with creativity, with passion and compassion. And I think that's one of the things that um, is very, very important. This is my family tree story. Um, my name is Erica Hilton, and I am very grateful that you're here and listening to my story. I hope that I can impart a little bit of my life um, with you so that you can learn from my experiences, perhaps. Um, thank you very much, and I wish you all the best. Thank you. <laughs>